Hi, this is Craig from Startup Stories, and I'm here with uh, Jason from uh, Jay McQueen Media, and we're going to hear about his startup story. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, tell me how you got into startups in the first place. Um, I guess it was a complete accident. Uh, I, oh geez, where do I even start? Um, I was unceremoniously kicked out of Canada after seven years, so I right. had to come back to a new country. Um, and uh, start from scratch without like any connections or knowing anyone. And I was doing a lot of work from home, and then I heard about this, uh, or a coworker, coworker, a friend said there's a co working space, um, which sounded awesome because I was going kind of a little bit nuts being at home. And it was only really when I started uh, mixing with other entrepreneurs at the co working space E29 that mm -hmm. I thought, oh, there seem to be people who do freelancing stuff, so you know, they don't actually have a job, they do other jobs and you can actually string that together enough to actually make a living off it. So I guess that's when I got sick of sending out resumes and I got more and more people asking me to do their videos, that's when I um, yeah, sort of just stopped sending out resumes and there never really was a really conscious, conscious decision not to not to get a real job. So, so you kind of fell into it in a lot of ways. Definitely yes. fell into it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, that's good. Accidental entrepreneurship, it's, it's quite common actually. A lot of people just find themselves falling into it. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a background in uh, media, and particularly in, in, in photography and, and, and videography. So so where did that all come from? Yeah, I sort of fell into that as well. Um, I, did, I did a Bachelor of Commerce at the University of Tasmania. Um, I sort of have always had customer service roles, so a bit of time mm -hmm. at Telstra, um, a bit of time customer service on a ski resort. Um, and I guess I was always taking photos. And then I started to be able to incorporate that more. I always, well, when I got my first camera, I just, yeah, I couldn't put it down. So I started incorporating the photography and the video making more and more into my jobs. Mm -hmm. Until the last job I had um, in Canada was doing social media for a ski resort, which involved skiing around a ski resort during good conditions and taking photos and videos and then posting on social media. It's a pretty awesome job. I don't think it gets much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only, re the only way I was going to quit that job is if they kicked me out of the country, which is pretty much what they did. Yeah. But um, I find the background in commerce actually does help me quite a lot because mm -hmm. I'm not coming out as a, a really a filmmaker. I'm coming out as someone who has an understanding of that marketing and customer service. So I nail that down and then, then try and concentrate on the how to make things look pretty. And that's, uh, like. that's pretty good. And you've been running for a couple of years now. Yes, I hadn't realised how long until you, you asked me just then. Yeah, so I, because I don't really have a start date because I was falling into it. I guess, you know, 18 months to two years. Mm. But I've certainly got to the point now where I'm not worried about the next couple of months, like something's always popping up. I don't know what I'll be doing in two months from now, but I know something's, yeah, popping up. Yeah. So, um, so what have been some of the challenges that you sort of encountered along the way? Pricing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, how much does it cost? Because someone will ask for just a ballpark, and I've just been caught out so many times with that throwing out a ballpark figure and then getting tied down to an extremely cheaper, cheap version. Underpricing yourself when you don't mm -hmm. realise how much your time spent making stuff or you know doing that work is worse because you have to then factor in administration, which you've got to do yourself, the website design, which you've got to do yourself. Yeah, all, all the non-productive time, yeah. all, 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 all the processing time, the stuff you've got to do behind the scenes. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, when people told me how much I should have been charging, I was like, I can't charge that much, this is not known. No. I've gotten used to it now. Mm -hmm. um, other challenges? I, uh, I think that's really the biggest one. Um, well, you had a business background. Yeah. And, you know, sort of, you, you already had the other sort of businessy skills you needed for it. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, basically um, selling your ability to take fantastic photos and, and make really good videos. Mm. And the good thing was, I haven't had to do marketing, really. It's just mm -hmm. been word of mouth, which is awesome, because, you know, marketing is probably one of the hardest things I know other people find with, with other companies. But being a sole trader, I don't need much to, to live on, I guess. I don't need much, many projects to keep me busy because I do the shooting and the videoing and the product, uh, the, the um, directing and, and everything. Yeah. Like, I can do a project a week and I'd be happy. Yeah. That's have fine. you have you thought of expanding the business beyond yourself? Um, thought about it a little bit. Uh, I got, when I was really busy, I actually looked into getting freelancers, mm -hmm. um, like online, so freelancer.com and Upwork, just to do some editing yep. so for the simpler videos. Um, that sort of worked. I spent probably spent as much time though explaining what I wanted 
and in the end I just wanted to do it myself. Yep. Um, as far as other people go, I think the direction I really decided to go in was you just get so competent in an area and specialised that I'm able to pick and choose who I actually want to mm -hmm. who I actually want to work with. Okay. Um, so no, I'm actually quite happy just doing my own thing. Cool. Living and, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what lessons have you learned along the way? Hmm. I mean, I ask this question so many times when I'm talking to other people as well. Uh, don't under price yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the time I'm I'm using lessons that I did learn, mm -hmm. like as I was going through through other stuff in customer service. And on the ski resort, I was dealing with other photographers and freelancers. So right. I, I remember the lessons I learned from the best ones mm -hmm. there, like, um, you know, exceeding customer expectations, which sounds cliche, but, you know, being able to take pride in everything you do. Um, being contactable, um, mm -hmm. being being responsive, always having time for customers. Um, what else have I learned? Um, mainly managing customer expectations. That's been a that's been a hard yep. one as well because you know there's quite often you start with their expectations. Are, you know they want a Hollywood style video, but yes, they're not aware of the. Um, the resources that go into that, you know, something made, they show me something that's been made by a production crew in, you know, $30,000 cameras, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have to reset your... Yeah, because yeah, it is, yeah, doing high quality video does cost an awful lot, but, yep. you know, these days you can do something that's kind of good enough, mm -hmm. um, you know, quite cheaply and quite cost effectively. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, that's, that's the thing, like, I exist between this area of do it yourself with your own camera or iPhone, which mm -hmm. actually these days gets pretty good results. Yeah. Like if you just do some basic stuff, like you've got some good lighting and you've got a room that's not too echoey, it's not bad. Yeah. Um, between that and getting a production company in, which is going to cost you $10,000, but there is a fairly big, a sizable chunk in there. Yeah. Well, a lot of the gap in between has got to do with the, the, the expertise and the ability you bring to it, which is, you know, understanding how to uh, set up the shots, how to light the shots, how to... Uh, edit and cut it so it's appropriate because mm -hmm. um, I find that uh, those are those are the real challenges like actually holding up a camera and filming something and not moving the camera around too much that's yeah. the easy part but everything else starts to build on that mm -hmm. yeah so um, what what advice would you give to somebody else who is you know maybe chucked out of Canada or somewhere else <laughs> had to come back to Australia and start again from scratch you know somebody who was looking at setting up their own business or their own business yeah. or falling into it I, it seems to me that the best jobs I've had um, have been ones that I've created myself so you know if you do want a cool job then you may have to like start start doing it yourself I don't know that I necessarily um, advise other people to go about the, the way I did. Mm. I think it's supposed to have a business plan and <laughs> stuff. I didn't. Um, probably not a bad idea. Uh, it's probably going to be slow towards the start. Mm -hmm. Just be prepared for that. Maybe have funds available. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. Um, yeah, and connections actually. Many yeah. lots of people. Not everything works. Not every connection is going to, you know, but you might come back to someone like a year later and that'll actually lead to something. Yeah, sometimes it's timing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't discount the, uh, you know, the talking and the schmoozing. <laughs> well, I think a lot of it is also don't write off somebody because, mm. they, it, because they're not going to employ you right now or they don't have, you know, there isn't a, a relationship you can build now. Yeah. Because six months, 12 months down the track, they may have changed position or, you know, something else have changed and suddenly you know, there might be some really strong grounds for a partnership. Yep. Mm. Yeah. So, um, give, given where you've got from, <laughs> you know, I normally ask people what they would have done differently. Yeah. I'm going to ask you as well, because yep. you, you're kind of forced into a position where you had to find something. Mm. But what you would you have done differently if you'd kind of had more sort of control over that entire process? I don't know as much I could have done. Um, you mean the control of the process of if, you had, if you had more control of that process so this would have that. been immensely easier if I had done this in Canada like mm -hmm. where I knew all the photographers and videographers and customers 
Um, so I guess not starting from complete scratch would have been would have been a lot easier. Yeah. Um, I don't know that the plan would have helped me because I just changed so much. Like at the start, I was just saying yes to everything. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing as long as you know you're conscious of the fact that you're always on the lookout for what your niche is or what what you want to specialize in. Yeah. Because you can't be you can't be everything. I think I was doing some 3D stuff for a while and I just realized that you just that's specialized it's not area. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. backing away from that. If I'm already doing the shooting, the filming, the directing, and everything else, and that's that's pretty general purpose. So. Um, yeah, don't be afraid of doing free or or um, a low cost job if it's actually leading to somewhere, or you know, expanding your stuff. If it's actually you've got a mind if it's actually leading somewhere. Yeah. That said, be careful of the people who offer you jobs when they say it's going to give you coverage and exposure, because you always get that as a creative. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what I would have done. Other than that, I don't know, but I, I could have done much else differently. Mm. Cool. <laughs> if you uh, had the chance to go back and do it again. Would you still do what you're doing, or would you have gone and found something else? I would totally have done it the same way. Yep. Funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been that bad. Um, and working for myself, uh, yeah, it has been really, really good. So you've got a good boss. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I've worked multiple weekends in a row, like all the way through, quite a few times, but. Um, yeah, I've also, like I said, I also took January off just to explore canyons in Tasmania. Mm. Didn't ask anyone, just did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was on yep. contact, contact with customers and just pushed everything forward. And I, like, I don't know other jobs. I'm taking a couple of months off to go to Canada. Yeah. No other job would let you do that, really. No, no, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, so I love that part of it. Mm. No, it's, uh, yeah, I do everything exactly the same. No, that's fantastic. Mm. Well, thanks very much, Jason, and all the best with um, you know your your company into the future. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thanks.